Can you lift your hands to Jesus? Can we kindly lift our hands to Jesus? Just lift your hands to Jesus, whatever you are. Just lift it to Jesus. Bible says that he is the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Just lift your hands to Jesus. That we will lift our Lord up. Second Timothy 4, 2 verse 4. He said, now every soldier is determined to please the one who enlisted him into being a soldier. Just lift your hands to him today. Just, can you just lift it? Paul said, lift your hands without doubting or reason. I am glad my heart has come. You are my peace. I can be moved like Zion's hills. My feet are still. I am glad my heart is calm. You are my peace. I can be moved like Zion's hills. My feet are still. You are my God. 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 You are my I am glad my heart is calm. You are my peace. I can be moved like Zion's hills. My feet are still. I'm so glad my heart is calm. You are my peace. I shan't be moved like Zion's hills. My feet are still. You are my God. You are my God. You are my God. Can you lift your hands to me? You are my God. You are my God. You are my God. Once upon a time, the creator of all creations sat in glory before he said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth there was an operation that was captured that I'd like to bring your mind to and that operation was such that all through time Lucifer and a group of angels called the Halals called the Lucifers, the light bearers that cause to shine, the morning stars, understood the dynamics of creation. So before God made all things, he understood one power. Nothing you see was made without sound. And this morning stars had a duty because Job said in Job chapter 38, the sixth verse, he says, Whereupon was the foundations of the earth laid and the cornerstone thereof. When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. The Hebrew says in verse 7 that in the singing of the angels or the stars of the morning, the foundations of the earth were laid. So the earth was founded on singing. So when Lucifer left heaven, according to scripture, the next time there was any song that was sung, it was when Miriam was restoring, even by reason, after the times of David. Miriam was now restoring to Israel the songs of Moses, that he has become my salvation, even as they left Egypt. But after that, there was no sound again. That was sung. Can I prove to you from scripture? In Luke chapter 2, from verse 13, when the angels appeared in the heavens, the Bible says, they spoke 
of the praises of God. There's no record they sang. He said, they praised the Lord saying, not singing. Because heaven lost its music when the morning stars took off from the heavens. They carried the method of creation that was singing. So when they left, they left a void in glory. And God was looking for a sound on the earth. And once upon a time, he found it in a man called David, who created the 24-7 pre praise service through the priestly calls. And morning, afternoon, and night, God found his song again. That's why God said, I have found a man after my own heart. Because someone has restored the decibels of singing. If you do not know what Thanksgiving is all about, the Bible says even the foundations of the earth was founded on a shout. Or if you are struggling with that shout, Psalms 37, the verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. That delight is making yourself excited in God through dancing, through clapping, through singing, through shouting. And he will give you the desires, not the prayers of your mouth, the desires of your heart. Anyone that enters the delightsome operations of Christ has answers to prayers they never made requests for. But not only so. Not only so. There was a prophet that was hired to curse Israel. In the book of Numbers chapter 23, Balaam was busily cursing Israel. But 21 says, Neither have I seen iniquity in Jacob, nor have I behold perverseness in all of Israel. Then he says, For the shout of the king is in their midst. So a shout neutralizes a curse. And not only so, hold it, hold it, hold it. We have been reading this scripture, but we always run away from it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout. So rapture is like this. Jesus will come. Hey! Jesus himself will shout. Before the archangel's trumpet. Before the sound of the angels. So go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. There are three sounds you hear. The trumpet, the voice of an angel, and Jesus himself shouting. That's why he says, for the Lord himself, not his angels, himself shall descend with a shout. So when Jesus is coming for the church, he's coming with a shout. Because it's an oppression in the heavens. But today I'll show you something. So your praise will be everlasting. The psalmist said in Psalm 22, that the God of Israel dwells in the praises of Israel, his people. And the truth about praise is that it is the realm where the spirit has freedom, sir. Because the Bible said that the spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters and God said, let there be light. But before the spirit could hover, should I show you what the spirit did? According to Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning your life. Quench not the spirit. In the Greek, it is one sentence. So if you check it well, it's comma, semicolon, comma, semicolon, full stop. What it means to say, without rejoicing, without praying always, without giving thanks always, you quench the spirit. And when you quench the spirit, creation cannot occur because he must move before it can be created. So Satan is stealing your worship. Satan is stealing your joy because he knows that's the only realm creation can occur. That's how come the world is using songs to create polluted culture. But the church has not understood we must use songs to create prophetic atmospheres. Ghana needs a song. The economy needs a song. The nation needs a song. Because he said, when heaven lost its praise, 
God realized he cannot wait for mature people. So the psalmist said in Psalm 8 verse 2, after he had declared, O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name. Thou hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained, ordained. It means that is the location for strength. Thou hast ordained strength to steal, he said, to destroy the enemies and to steal the avenger. So Satan is excited when people lose their praise. Satan gets energy when you've lost your praise. But I announce to you today that Bible also said in Ephesians chapter 4, the, uh, chapter 5 verse 20, that giving thanks always for all things, not in all things alone, but also for all things. So you lost the baby. Lord, I thank you the baby died. You lost the mother. It looks crazy, but I came to announce to you, Jesus before Lazarus tomb was giving thanks. He said the body is thinking at this time, but he said, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you see him. The word giving thanks is Eucharistio. In thanksgiving is grace. The disgrace is taken away for grace to be enhanced when thank you is released. So you notice that you feel disgraced. You feel empty. Why has this thing taken long? Lord, I thank you for the delay. You know what's going to happen? Your emotions will shift. Satan has no power over your circumstance so he gets power over your feeling. When he changes the way you feel, your power is immobilized. So he can touch your emotions. And thanksgiving is the escape from every wrong emotion. So you have a bad situation. Lord, thank you. We just lost the baby. And you just begin to move. And the devil is confused because he expected you to be sad. He expected you to be frustrated. But you realized that out of joy, you draw from the wells of salvation. So as you begin to give praise, I lost my joy job glory to jesus i lost that marriage glory to jesus and all of a sudden revelation will dawn on you the power of christ to rest upon you because you will come to understand that i rejoice in necessities so that the power which is in christ jesus may rest on my mortal flesh in everything give thanks I met a missionary in an Arab country and he said, while you people were complaining about COVID, we were happy because it was an answer to prayer. I said, my dear, what do you mean? And she said to me, he said, we have been praying in Saudi that God will open the nation to the gospel. But when lockdown came, the caliphate opened the door for YouTube. The caliphate opened the door for certain things in the nation. So he said the church was able to grow faster in two years because of lockdown. So while you don't understand what is going on in the spirit God is using it for another story you are not aware your strength is in thanksgiving it's the location of a dream power Jesus says have you never read <laughs> that out of the mouths of babes and sacraments he has perfected praise he has perfected praise. And child of God, tonight, I end with something Jesus did. In Matthew chapter 14, we see the story of how Jesus multiplied bread. Five loaves and two fish. In John chapter 6, the Bible says he asked, he himself knowing what to do. Another version says he asked so that he will know what Philip has to say about the matter. And Philip said, eight months salary, 200 penny worth, it's not enough to feed this man. Then Andrew came and said, ah, there's a boy with two loaves, uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. What say he? He says, but even these five loaves of bread and two fish, it's not enough to feed these people. And Jesus smiled and lifted up the bread. Matthew said he blessed it and gave thanks. Uh, he actually blessed it and broke it and started distributing it. But John didn't say he broke it. John 6 verse 11, verse 23, never said Jesus broke the bread. Bible says in John 6, verse 11, when Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples. 
The Bible even recorded it in heaven's book. In verse 23. When they came to Tiberias, at the place where Jesus had fed them with bread after giving thanks, not after breaking it. And when I read it, I realized something. God replaced break with thanksgiving. You see, five loaves of bread, he told them in the same Matthew chapter 15. When they had not met 4,000 men, they had seven loaves this time and a few fishes. And he said, he, he said to them, sorry, he said, how can we use these seven loaves to feed them? And he says, God is going to do something about it. And he gave thanks again. Now, in the days of Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 3, there was something called the bread of Baal Shalisha. And when he multiplied this bread, the Bible says it was 20 loaves for 100 men. And the servitor asked, how can this feed 100 men? And he said, go and feed. And it fed them. The story behind it is this. Five loaves is not enough for 5,000. But the moment five loaves is added to Thanksgiving, the limitation of five. Let me say this again. Let me say this again. Apparently, sir, it was after the bread was multiplied that they had five baskets, 12 baskets full. So they were not sharing the bread from baskets because Luke and Mark says they came and took it from his hand. So this is what happened. Jesus looked to heaven and said, Lord, thank you. Five is enough for 5,000. So what happened was this. When Matthew said he break, check it in your King James. The them is in italics. It is in italics. The original text didn't have it. So the literal text should read, and he gave thanks and break. What he broke was not told. Because he was actually breaking not the bread. He was breaking the limitation of five loaves for 5,000. So the man in his own heart. So I'll show you the picture. The disciples go share. They come back to Jesus and break from his hand. So the more they break, the more it never ends. So 5,000 men, women and children, 25,000 plus, had been fed from his hand. Then the rest was gathered in baskets. Because you see, the one who is thankful breaks limits. tonight you have complained enough and I'll borrow what one of my mentors bishop said you have also prayed enough and the time is coming we will stop asking you have you prayed about it and we'll ask you have you praised about it we are entering the face of the church out of the mouths of babes and sucklings situations will be too bad for prayer oh you didn't get this it will be too destroyed for you to say in the name of Jesus. So the best way to go about it is like Paul and Silas. And also after praying, they praise. But when I went to check the Hebrew, the Greek word for praise, it was not what we do. The Greek is humel, they sang hymns. And it was a hymn in the Hebrew. That was actually called the Great Halal. It was some 113. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Praise, oh ye servants of the Lord. Then 114 says, Ah, when Israel was brought out of a people of a strange country, and Jacob from a people of a strange land, he said Judah was a sanctuary, and Israel is dominion. So he was quoting. Then he went to Psalm 115. He said, not unto us, not unto us, but unto thee, O Lord. Then he went to Psalm 16. He said, I love the Lord. Because when I pray, he heareth my voice and he heareth my supplication. And when he came down to 118, they sang all the chapters of Psalm 113, 114, 115, 116, 117. When they got to 118, the heavens could not stop. You know why? Because they got to a part in Psalm 118 which said... Oh Lord, send now prosperity. Send now deliverance. Send now salvation. Child of God, the devil has been stealing your praise for a long time. Because it's your highest weapon. So it is what you do when you don't know what to do. Jericho could only be destroyed not by prayer. It will only hear the sound of praise. So he says, speak not, O ye men of Israel. Silence! And for seven days, he kill a new tabas. 
because all they were hearing was something called the ram's horn. The Hebrew calls it the yobel, where you get jubilee, the jubilee. So they were hearing the yobel. So as they go around, and he was ensuring no one was talking. The people on the walls of Jericho were laughing. What do you people think you are doing? But God knew a technology that the earth responds to sound. It responds to music. So when they are complaining, you are injecting the earth with praise. So when men are cast down, thou shalt say lifting up. Thou shalt say lifting up. Thou shalt say lifting up. From tonight, ask your friend, have you praised? And when I say praise, it will come as a sacrifice. Because he said, when the bodies of the beast whose blood was brought by the high priest into the sanctuary were burnt without the camp wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people suffered without the gate he suffered without the gate he said I will come and the moment he said he suffered without the gate he said let us therefore go forth therefore oh unto him bearing his reproach for here have we no continuing city? We seek that which is to come. Oh, Maka, the Scalobondadia, Rezum Belebekepe. Then he says in by 15, he said, By whom also we offer spiritual sacrifice or sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips. And he was quoting from Bosiah chapter 14, verse 2, when he says, Take ye therefore words unto the Lord. And when you shall speak to him, tell him that you have committed iniquity. Then you say, and we have come to offer the calves of our lips. So in the New Testament, you don't bring a bull. You don't bring a cow. You don't bring a goat. You bring a calf of your lip. So things are bad. Things look like you cannot say thank you. So in the adverse situation, this is causing me pain. But I say thank you, Lord. That's a calf. That's a bullock. That's a sacrifice. I just gave God a blood sacrifice. Listen, something will happen in the heavens. Tonight, there are some people up there. There's a name. I had Jennifer. You feel pain in your leg. Just thank God. Just say, Lord, thank you. Look, I'm telling you something. Lord, thank you. Because you see, sir, when you thank God for the pain, Satan was using the pain to distract you from your healing. Because the word Rafa in the Hebrew means relax and let go. Jehovah Rafa means the God who relaxes you so he can take away the sickness. It is like God puts you on an anesthesia so you are not aware. Have you noticed most of your healings happened when you were not conscious you were being healed? When you are so uptight, heal me, heal me, heal me, you might not come. Relax. Relax. Walk into the meeting. Relax. Enjoy the presence. Relax. And by the time you are leaving, something has left you. Relax and let go. So when you begin to thank God, the pain, the despair, that is causing you not to be relaxed. Why? Be anxious for nothing. So praise, but with supplications and prayers. Make your request known to God. Can you put it in the message for me? I'll show you something. He says, he said, let your praise, let your praise shape your prayers. Let your praise I wish you had the message. Let your praise shape your prayers. So instead of telling God, Lord, when are you going to do it? He says, continuing therein in prayer and watching thereon too with thanksgiving. Colossians 4 2. When Jesus said, Watch and pray, he had not yet died. In the new covenant after his death, you don't watch and pray by opening your eyes. You watch and pray by giving thanks. So anytime you say, Lord, give me the contract, and you wake up in the morning, the Bible says, Watch and pray. How do you watch unto? Lord, thank you for the contract. Lord, thank you, it is done. Lord, I give you glory. And I steal the avenger. I take Satan's weapons from him. Because I tell you, armed robbers come to your house because they can use a gun on you. The day you collect the gun and shoot yourself, they've lost their power. That means, if Satan is causing you pain, and the pain didn't make you grumble and murmur, and you were still joyful and excited, Satan has limited resources. He will withdraw the attack. Because it's not working. Because it's not working. Because it's not working. A church is coming. That will be full of praise. A church is coming that will be full of praise. 
and they'll have 72 hour praise marathons they'll have 72 hour worship sessions and they are just speaking over Ghana they are standing at places because we are good at praying but I think we have not yet mastered praising we have to come to a place we don't do prayer work, we do praise work we are going to Kotobabi we are going to Independence Square and we are singing over the nation we are singing over Ghana because the Bible said to me that your sons even as young men marry virgins so shall your sons marry thee and even as they are betrothed so shall I be told to you and even as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride so shall the Lord rejoice over you so it is time you are dancing through the problem because yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil for thou art with me so because he is with me I sing to him I look to you Jesus I look to you Jesus I see a press break over here. I see all over the place. The glory of God is coming up for you here. Like a battle. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. The power of God. Make a price. And here it is. Here it is. Psalm 104 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Psalm 68 says, The chariots of the Lord are 20,000. Yea, in the mountain of Sinai. So Sinai was an entrance for God. Apparently, the word Horeb said, Horeb in the Hebrew is the same word for a sword that was flaming. Harab in the garden. So when Moses stood before God, he was in a kind of garden where Yahweh was. And the shocking thing about the omnipotent, the omnipresent and omniscient, he that created time and was without it, but decides to stretch his hand, not his body, his hand, the finger of God, just into time to move some things. God stood in front of Moses. Hours ceased. Times were held back. Moses and God face to face was a timeless zone. So when he says enter his courts, his gates with thanksgiving, he's telling you praise and thanksgiving is access to the realm of the timeless. And it is only in the timeless you can affect time. So when he wanted to show him about children you have, the Bible says he made him sleep and took him 400 years to come. Your seed will sojourn in a strange land for 400 years. And that's the only way Abraham could receive the information in a timeless realm. Every time you have a dream, every time God speaks to you, you are in a timeless zone. But can I show you one that makes you awake in that timeless realm? When you begin to look at God and say, Oh Lord, you are beautiful. I've left time. Your faith is all I see. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace. 